In this video, I will give you the scoop on what's coming on the new season of Torchlight Infinite, Whipsering Mist. Get ready for new gameplay features, hero traits, adjustments plus more. Stick around so you won't be left behind on this new season and consider subscribing to get the Torchlight Infinite's guides, updates, and builds. Let's start with the new gameplay, the Mistville. In Whispering Mist, you'll explore Mistville, a town where things get a bit crazy. The mist has spread everywhere, and it's not just fog. It's full of secrets and surprises. When you meet the mist residents, you might get infected and start a mysterious journey. To navigate the mist, you'll need lanterns and sanity. But don't worry, there are hidden treasures and cool stuff to find, like a sanatorium and cursed items. Just be careful, some things come with a price. The clock tower is a challenge zone with puzzles and rewards. Solve them to get treasures and something called an activation medium. We'll talk about that shortly, so stay tuned. As you explore, gather mistful intel and uncover the truth. Your sanity will grow, letting you explore more. But watch out for Mazet, a strange disease that gets worse as you go deeper. Remember, the longer you stay, the more dangerous it gets. But there's a legendary treasure waiting for the hunter who survives 15 days. This would add more gameplay and replayability. Now, let's talk about the new activation medium skill that will replace triggered skills. It is a brand new type of support skill that's a game changer for hunters. Unlike other support skills, activation medium packs a punch with 1 to 3 random affixes. Sounds complicated? Don't worry, I'll explain. Based on the live preview sample, when you equip Arrow Einherjar's skill and an activation medium sentry into the support skills slot this will happen. When there are no sentries nearby, the activation medium kicks in automatically, boosting your Arrow Einherjar. Activation medium doesn't just stop there. It can amp up the damage of your skills, and even increase the number of skills you can use simultaneously. That means smoother gameplay for mobile hunters, with controls no longer a hassle. And there are a whopping 26 types of activation mediums to explore. Talk about options. Want to unleash a barrage of attacks? Try the blink attack activation medium. Or maybe you prefer spellcasting. Wind rhythm activation medium has got you covered, triggering spells at lightning speed. But enough about that, let's talk strategy. In previous seasons, skill slots were a bit wonky. But in this new season, they revamped the support logic. Now, only support skills can be installed in the support slots for passive skills. Furthermore, the passive skill slots is increased to 4 from previously 3 slots. This means hunters need to choose their skills wisely, doubling down on strengths and avoiding weaknesses. It's all about strategic gameplay, folks. There is no new hero that will be introduced in this new season, however, we have a new hero trait for Erica, the Lightning Cat Shadow. This has been confirmed during the live stream, but I got a leak about this prior to the release of this new hero trait, and I was right. With a trait like no other, the Kitty Power Generator. Erica's journey began when she witnessed Yuga's electrifying Ember technology. Inspired by its power, she decided to harness the energy of shocks through Ember Tech. As Erica dashes with sparks and lightning, her movement speeds up, and her damage output skyrockets. But that's not all. She's also mastered the art of converting the highest damage dealt into her homemade feline figure. This figure has a chance to trigger when Erica strikes an enemy, sending shockwaves through the area and leaving foes in agony. But Erica's abilities don't stop there. With her traits, she continues to evolve, enhancing her feline figure's power and finding new ways to unleash it. By activating it while on the move, she can consume agility blessings for buffs and even accumulate Electify through her movements, deflecting multiple instances of shock damage. However, Erica's focus on offensive prowess has left her lacking in defense. While her electrifying attacks may stun enemies, she's vulnerable to counterattacks. What are your thoughts on this new hero trait? Let me know in the comments section. For the new sets of new legendary gears, there are many so please refer to the patch notes in the video description or the live stream to get information about these new gears. Now, let's talk about resistance, a crucial aspect for hunters. 
In previous seasons, resistance often determined survival, but it sometimes felt too overwhelming. So, in the new season, resistances are capped to maximum resistance at 60% and adjusted the values of resistance affixes. Plus, resistance no longer decreases with your hunter's level. They also tone down elemental and erosion damage from monsters. These changes mean resistance is still vital for survival, but now hunters won't hit a wall if their resistance isn't maxed out. And here's some good news. They introduced a new magical ember called the Reincarnation Ember. It lets you change the type of resistance your gear provides, including erosion resistance. So, you can tweak your resistance to fit your needs. Overall, these adjustments is said to provide more diverse gameplay opportunities while keeping things balanced and enjoyable for all hunters. For story mode in the early game, they revamped the main story, condensing it from five chapters to three, making it more challenging and engaging. They also added a limit to the number of challenge attempts, encouraging hunters to strategize and overcome obstacles. But don't worry about hitting a roadblock. They added the new gameplay mechanic, the treasure troves filled with hidden treasures at key points in the story. Here, you can gain valuable experience points and specific legendary gear to power up your hunter. To address the issue of abundant gear not leading to improvement, they reduce the drop quantity of rare equipment. Instead, they fine-tune the affixes and values to ensure your growth feels more rewarding. These adjustments aim to provide a smoother, more enjoyable journey for all hunters, whether you're just starting out or a seasoned veteran. Netherrealm Confusion Cards also has a revamped, this to help hunters obtain desired items more easily. These changes aim to make the early game smoother, more challenging, and full of surprises. Starting your journey as a hunter can be overwhelming, especially with the variety of gear available. To address this, they introduced set gear drops in the early to mid-game stages. These sets consist of six pieces, and equipping two to six pieces grants additional bonuses. This helps hunters set clearer goals and improves their overall experience. While set gear is great for early and mid-game use, hunters may need to mix and match gear in later stages for optimal performance. Additionally, they also introduced Youth Edition prototypes for popular high-threshold legendary gear. These prototypes have slightly weaker effects but are easier to acquire, allowing hunters to explore different builds more freely. Last but not the least, they added and keep the team up system this season. Now, you can team up with friends to tackle challenges in Netherrealm. Each member can choose to play solo or in a team, and loot is shared among all members. Bonuses are influenced by the initiator. Team play boosts rewards and enhances the overall experience. They added a gifting feature too, allowing you to send items to friends. Plus, we have a special gift code for all hunters. For now, they are still working to improve the system further, so expect updates in the future. For full patch notes, please check the link in the video description. Now, what are your thoughts on this changes in the new season? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you so much again for watching until the end. Consider subscribing and, and leave a like to support the channel.